kids there for some reason because iit kharagpur has been a massive influence in bringing geoscience and and, and kind of promoting geoscience i did not see that lack of information about geoscience as a pathway for career development uh, in west bengal so um, yeah i mean i chose uh, after class 10th i chose science and um and then i was thinking like i saw all my classmates doing uh, preparation for engineering prepare preparation for medical uh, to to clear medical exams and i was like okay that's not my cup of tea i kind of decided there and then that it's not my cup of tea i don't want to i want to do something different and that's where i started investigating at that point my sister uh, who is 6 years older to me was studying uh, her she she actually graduated also from delhi university doing uh, bachelors of science uh, in uh, biochemistry and then she followed uh, a must uh, she followed up that with a masters in uh, in uh, uh, biotechnology from iit roorkee so i was like so that was the same time when i was like okay i need to um yes so yes thanks for the clarification gunjan yes so i'm signing in with a different account name uh, but uh, of sudeep das gupta but that's me uh, shraddha so yeah um so uh, where was i so when yeah so my sister was there doing her masters in science of uh, in biotechnology from iit roorkee and i'm like okay i have definitely not decided that i'm going to pursue engineering as a career so then what but i still saw my sister could def- uh, could go into this big brand institute iit which everybody wants to dreams of you know always wants to go to iit so i think i right there made a very smart choice that so i and 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 when i say smart this is something which i actually faced later on when i entered the industry what is smart so smart is like um like um i have this there so it's specific measurable uh, attainable realistic and time uh, bound objectives so there and then i was kind of like okay no this is not for me right now i am kind of a bit delayed in achieving my goals here so but i have a i i can still pave a way towards getting into iit getting that brand name uh being that professional uh, professional getting that professional stamp of an iit so that was a huge um, interest for me uh and one of the ways i found was i asked my sister like, it was a very simple question in fact i didn't even ask like she herself was telling you know she was going through her recruitment process and she told me that well you know very well paid packages um were being offered to some geoscience uh, students and then i was like okay wait a minute you're telling that somebody in iit who is not an engineer is getting one of the highest paid packages and things like that i just don't i didn't get that you know i didn't understand that theory so then i started looking up for options and by that time um i i still wasn't clear what i wanted to do but i knew that i wanted to secure good marks in class 12 um based on that um i will be i thought that i'll apply to du and in coincidentally i saw that the department of geology um is there in delhi university so hence i got into uh, the department of geology i did my bachelor's of science so from there i mean one thing which also attracted to me other than the story which i told you about why i pursued geology as a subject as a, in bachelor's is uh, is the fact that i have been a very curious minded person i always want to know more and the fact is um, you know we are staying in this world we are pursuing so many different career but how many of us actually really understand uh, the earth in and out you know or have developed um, as they have gone through their career have developed an understanding um, or they have developed interest in understanding where we live on 
what so probably I can, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, so yeah. We can say that it was it was always your inquisitiveness that led you to become a geoscientist. And uh, also, what I could understand that uh, you did not follow the the regular path of doing engineering, and after that, appearing for IIT JE or all the engineering examinations and all that yeah. stuff. Instead, you took no, the I... other round. The the uh, you took a detour uh, and took the the path which yeah. was not very well passed out or chalked out, and you you went the unconventional way. So, guys, uh, this for all people who are there in 11th and 12th. When you when you say that I I cannot take the strain of getting into an IIT or I cannot take the strain of preparing for an IIT, uh, I, we can understand because we've been there. We done that we've been through it so this is how this is what Sadha is trying to say that the conventional way is not the only way there are other ways that are also there all you need to do is open up your eyes look at all the avenues that are there available and then choose the way that is right like uh, I, I, I would want to quote over here from the very famous uh, movie based on engineers three idiots you should go after the knowledge, education, jack market, which I absolutely. I mean, one so, of the so, earlier. Sada, why don't Why don't you tell us something about what What is geology all about? I'm I'm actually very curious. I yeah. I think I told you this thing when we were conversing. We were conversing last evening. That the moment I saw your uh, profile, I was very inquisitive. I was like, wow, what is this? Because see, for me. I have only seen geoscientists or geophysicists or people doing that kind of work either on BBC or on Discovery or probably on in Hollywood movies. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm seeing a person first time in my life. I'm actually interacting with a person who actually does that on a practical basis. So I why don't you tell us something about it more? I have to be honest. When I started, I did not like. Dur dur tak mere family mein there's nobody who carry who who has a career in geoscience at all. It's just that you're very right that I just kept my eyes and um eyes and ears open to new opportunities. Uh, so yeah, yes. So you asked like, uh, what do we want to like? What is geoscience? So I prepared a small presentation. I'll try to uh, share it with you uh, if if uh, that's all right. Yeah. Absolutely, please go ahead. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I mean, my while I'm taking this time to uh, figure out um, how to share the presentation. Yes, I got it. So can you guys see my presentation? Can somebody tell me, uh, confirm it to me? Not Rishi, yet. Can you not, yet. not yet. OK, so now, I do get a now it's Now it's coming up. Right. OK, so oh. that's my intro introduction slide of what is Earth Sciences or ge geology. So uh, going through geology or earth sciences, you know, so geo means uh, earth and logia is study. So we basically are uh, studying earth, its related composition, structure, processes, which are acting both inside and outside of the earth, um, covering even the atmosphere, to learn about its past, present, and future. So it's important that we understand, we take examples of the past and we try to understand the present. And that's what typically a geologist is doing. So what it does, what it basically entails, it, it involves application of physics, mathematics, all your basic principles of physics, mathematics, uh, chemistry, biology, which we study all throughout in class 11, 12 on, uh, on, on Earth, basically. OK. So and it involves looking at rocks right from a micro scale so you will be involved with looking i don't know if you guys have even i never knew about it like we actually made thin sections of rocks so we made slides you know just like in the uh, so i took by i had biology so i made slides of rocks which i would put down on the microscope and study them um which tell you about different processes which are happening in the earth um 
from so from micro scale you can understand the earth at macro scale you know observing large atmospheric um, conventions that go on and even do very far away objects when you think about planetary sciences so what is so you can go into planetary geosciences or planetary geology so by um, so i wanted to give you i'm going to change my next slide i think that there's there's a certain lag in um, the slide so uh, rishi if you can let me know if you have if you can see the second yeah, slide yeah, i can see i can see okay so it's it's going on fine so yeah by studying geology you can become you can gain domain uh, knowledge of different things not just one not just geology so i've taken some pictures which i can associate with different um, uh, uh, specialties you can develop by studying geology so you can become a planetary scientist you can become a climatologist you can become an exploration geologist who are typically involved in oil and gas industry you can become a geophysicist you can become a geologist uh, the most uh, known known ones you know we know um, uh, ross as a geologist in friends you know so geoarchaeologist you can become a petrologist so that's the study of rocks again you can become hydrogeologist um a hydrogeologist is typically taking care are uh, trying to understand the aquifer systems uh, which give the ground water so understanding water resource as a natural resource and its availability on earth you can become an oceanographer you can become a marine biogeologist you can study seismologists to assess seismic hazards etc you can become a mineralogist or a crystallographer you can become a geochemist so there again the chemistry chemical reactions that happen in earth to make uh, which gives rise to different kinds of rocks uh, you can become a micro paleontologist which are which is the study of very uh, small fossils so fossils are basically the bio remains of um, uh, of organisms uh, which live which lived millions of years of uh, back in the earth and then you can become a seismic interpreter and that's what i am um so yeah these are the and i can i don't want to put you to sleep uh, you know based on so many disciplines which you can actually follow it's a very very long list but these are the main ones which you can pursue you know so uh, okay so seismic I'm, 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry so that don't tell yeah. me that this to give the list that you've given of 14 odd uh, this thing is after doing geology on it Yes, absolutely. So you have, if you do geology, you can become. I, I so didn't many... even, I didn't even knew half of the name. To be precise. Yeah, that's all. So there's this lack of uh, uh, understanding about geoscience as a science, as a, because it's not absolute science. It's a very interpretative science. So you have to. uh when you see when you observe a section so i remember when i joined B bachelor's in geology from uh, in in delhi university one of my structural geologist teacher told me like next time you watch a bollywood movie don't watch a bollywood movie for it the sake of it but see those rocks uh, where dipika and ranbir are romancing you know so you have I'm to sure look at you 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 want to watch only your eyes would watch only what you want to do because that's what you're doing all the time yeah yeah geology has taken up a lot of mind and mind space in my head because every time i go on vacation i cannot look i cannot look a mountain as just a piece of beauty i have to look at it what is the rock i remember one of my recent vacations was in new york and in central park i was looking at the rocks <laughs> so i always have a different perspective when i see the same scene with respect to many other friends so guys, that is that is what we've been talking about uh, probably in all the presentations that we've had and uh, gujun correct me uh, if i am wrong that if you start enjoying the work that you do it is not the work it is it is your enthusiasm that takes you it's, it's your passion exactly thank you which takes you and uh, takes you places and takes you you can get yeah. anything and everything absolutely absolutely yeah so so passion in so you can that's my opinion in my life i have seen you can turn the most boring thing into interesting if you have passion if you can kind of infuse what li what you like into that subject yeah 
so so i i do want i i'm assuming a lot of people actually don't know much about um seismic as a data because i'm saying that i'm a seismic interpreter so what is seismic so for that i ha i want to uh, show a very small uh, video on on what how seismic data actually uh, gets acquired so i'm going to play that video now is that fine oh yeah sure Some of the richest energy reserves in the world are just off our U.S. shores, waiting to be discovered in a government-owned area lying three to two hundred miles out to sea. An advanced exploration technique called seismic surveying is the first step to unlock this precious resource needed to ensure America's energy security. Offshore exploration is highly regulated and performed only in government-licensed areas. Following strict guidelines that protect the vital elements of our marine ecosystem. Well before seismic survey operations begin, safety precautions go into effect to protect marine life. Animal movement and behavior patterns are analyzed, and any areas of concern are closed to seismic surveys. During operations, visual and acoustic monitoring is used to detect marine mammals that may be present. Seismic surveying uses compressed air released into the water to create sound waves that penetrate deep into the subsurface rock at the bottom of the ocean. To give animals that may be sensitive to the sound time to leave the area, the surveying process begins with a soft start, a technique that gradually increases sound to full operational levels. The survey is conducted by a ship towing a compressed air gun, which fires in regular intervals. And a large array of sound sensors that record how long it takes for the sound to bounce back from the layers of rock under the sea floor. From the recorded data, detailed three-dimensional maps are produced. These provide engineers the information they need to develop a production plan in order to tap the highest yield reserves. The maps also pinpoint the safest and most efficient drilling locations, eliminating unnecessary drilling and reducing the number of dry wells. If visual observers or acoustic monitoring devices detect sensitive marine life in the vicinity at any time during the survey process, then all operations stop immediately and are restarted only when the area is clear. So, I I'm hoping that you guys could see uh, the uh, the the slide the the video right. I hope that you guys uh, heard the video all right and saw the video. Did you? Okay, so yeah, so you saw here that how a seismic data gets acquired. It's a very, very sophisticated technology. A lot of engineers um, are involved initially to, you know, even design the um, design the seismic, um, you know, how the, the 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 instruments that are used. So typically, you have a vessel. So seismic data acquisition can be of two kinds. It could be uh, land and it could be marine. And uh, they, so what we saw was a case example of marine data. So how marine data gets acquired. So you have a vessel which tows a lot of cables um, and the cables uh, are full of receivers or sensors. So then, it, so basically you need seismic data because you want to see, you want to create an image of the subsurface something like three, four kilometers down the earth, you don't know how that, lo how that looks. But these are, uh, this is the place where pockets of oil and gas are actually, you know, trapped. And to image that, you need seismic data. So seismic data gets acquired like that. So you send sound energies, and it's completely acoustics, you know, so your reflection theory is coming. So th when you send energy into the Earth's, sub Earth's subsurface, you're trying to send uh, pulses of energy uh, and they get reflected or refracted and they come back and they are collected by the receivers. And once this, because and you have the velocity information, you have the time information, which it, which it takes for the ray path to travel. As a result, you can calculate the distance of the of different layers and structures which are beneath. So it's like you are doing an ultrasound of the Earth, if you can if you can think about it like that. Oh, great, so great. So, so that, I'm sorry, uh, I'm. This is something that you do. 
on a daily basis or probably yes. this is what a geoscientist or a geophysicist or a geologist whatever i may call it as a naive person would do it on a daily basis yes what yes. are uh, what are younger brothers and brothers and sisters would be more interested in is uh, how to go about it what is the path to be there and once uh, how to get there so if you could throw a little more light on that that how do you reach the place where you are today right. what are the preparations so, that are required what are what are the things that are required or the integrities that are required to become a geoscientist or to become and what are the attributes that are required what are the basics that are required if i may call it and plus yes because uh, it's it's a materialistic world so i'm sure they would also want to know that how feasible or how lucrative it is as a career Probably. correct if you could touch okay. so, base upon those points right so so going point by point okay so how to become a geophysicist or how to have a career in geoscience you have to if you are in india so you can pursue your education either in india or abroad so typically in india you have to carry out a bachelor's degree followed up with a master's degree and the master's degree becomes your professional ticket to go into the industry okay uh, abroad uh, uh, you can i have seen both cases the similar that people have done a bachelor's and a master's but sometimes a four years um, engineering bachelor's degree uh, in geosciences are also available which can be pursued and they can still in, uh, they can enter uh, into the industry as geophysicist other than that um, so that's the industry side of it by pursuing a geos career in geoscience you can imagine like i had shown you before there's a huge potential for kids uh, to go and join um, academia to do research and development uh, so um, that's that's one huge possibility so then the next point which you asked me was about how lucrative this industry is so oil and gas has been a very very lucrative industry um i told you that i always wanted to have um a combination of both um um a passion that i can convert into you know uh, financial gains as well so uh, geoscience uh, exploration of oil and gas has been quite rewarding um, in terms of uh, financial gain and um this the market uh, fluctuates a little bit with uh, the oil price but the oil price it goes up and down however the you have to imagine that the energy demand of the industry will all will always be there any any nation so typically today when i showed you the video it was taken from one american um, site however the energy energy is something which is basic as a requirement for any country to you know develop or to even exist so energy demand and that is why what you see here on on this slide is that where are the oil and gas um, you know deposits uh, in um, on the on the world map and you see those red zones are the places where uh, oil and gas is you know available that implies that the diversity the geographical diversity which oil and gas uh, industry has is immense and that also gets reflected into the into my day to day life because when i work today i go to my office well now i cannot go to the office because of corona virus situation but when i go to my office actually i encounter at least 18 nationalities giving me the opportunity to interact with um, you know multicultural it's a very multicultural cultural very diverse place so yes it's very rewarding there's another branch of geoscientists who actually come into the oil and gas industry and who actually work in the on the rigs you know so you have rigs or oil oil rigs they are called so these oil rigs are uh, places uh, where it's a bit the oil fields are generally not located in the cities so they are located a bit of the city remotely as a result uh, you have to stay away from family sometimes in some cases um and 
so people specifically who work on the oil rigs so that also brings the incentive that you get paid very well much more than somebody who is in the office job so mine is a completely office desk job where i go to office and you know i have softwares where i uh, i can load the data i can analyze the data i can interpret the data in terms of geology in terms of geophysics i have so i am a geophysicist who has a background in geology but we have a lot of math mathematics graduates we have a lot of physics graduate who pursue geophysics i have friends from electrical engineering background who come into geo geosciences so yeah i mean that kind of i i i hope i have justified the scope of this subject which is like super wide oh so shada i have a question uh rishi if i may ask oh, sure, ma uh shada uh thank you rishi shada is it uh being on a having done geophysics or being a geoscientist physicist petrophysicist physicist uh, there are multiple of these things uh the horizons the industry is lucrative enough to take us or for kids to achieve their financial dreams and uh, how is it that industry all about because that's one industry which is never going to die as you said rightly it is an industry which is always going to grow in one form or the other right. whether it's got to with geothermal now if i understand correctly it is uh, the petrol uh, and the gas industry is moving towards geothermal so how is it that uh, how do you see the future of a geophysicist uh, in the coming times right it's very good question so for example that actually brings me to a study which i was uh, recently looking up at so iceland is actually investing so most of the convention so we are not we haven't gotten oil independent yet okay so we have to understand that um having said that uh, there is a lot of force where uh, you want to go from conventional choices of energy that is oil and gas and you go you are you want to go towards more cleaner energy resources uh, like geothermal energy but it is not yet at the stage that you know you can harness that energy and you know sustain it to feed to the demands of um, of of different nations so that is not there and it is in development but the point being that energy demand is always going to be there and as long as energy demand is going to be there it is going to get satisfied by a certain natural resource and from it could be a radioactive natural resource it could be geothermal energy which is also a form of radioactive energy coming from the earth's crust and mantle it could be uh so conventional oil resources like uh, what i am dealing with currently um and and you know even wind energy you know it requires you to understand the the uh, the coriolis effect which goes on to how the winds are moving you know so you have to understand that the energy source is always going is man has always you uh, tap the energy using something which is available with the earth as long as energy and earth you know they they always go in tandem as a result geoscientists and domain knowledge of geophysicists of geologists of atmospheric scientists is always going to be there i i i hope that i uh, uh, yeah you. you did thanks uh, shraddha but uh, what i understand is that is it a very research oriented uh, field or do you think uh, it is uh, something which is uh, not only research driven it is uh, i mean what we see it the other way uh, as well in the industry usually yeah yeah so so if you join the industry it's as lucrative as you can think about as uh, finance sector or um i don't know business analytics or anything like that it's very very comparable if you join the industry of course academics cannot be so so um if you enter the industry it is as comparable to any other uh, industry which you join yeah uh, in terms of uh, salary packages and everything 
so to enter the oil, one thing which i wanted to also share as an information is to enter the oil industry there are several routes you can be a mechanical engineer you can be um a chemical engineer you can be several other kinds of engineers and still be welcomed into the oil and gas industry me being a geologist i took this career path as one of the options to enter the oil and gas industry so shraddha uh, do you uh, suggest that geologist has an edge uh, over other uh, mechanical engineers or uh, mathematicians in petrol and uh, gas industry so um, i will answer it a bit differently you can the way the industry works is you cannot survive with one or the other okay so a mechanical engineer would want to fu fu fundamentally apply his knowledge on the earth for example in his in what he is doing if he is a part of the oil and gas industry how does he do, do that you cannot separate out his application for, uh, without you know his team having a geo, geo scientist who will be uh giving that domain ex expertise knowledge of uh, you know geology geology because the guy would not understand the earth you know so you need to under any application of engineering or any it's always a team what i'm trying to say it's a team work of different disciplines that finally turns into success and you need to be very safe uh, shada it will be very safe for me to conclude that geologist has an edge over everybody else in the petrol and gas uh, or anything to do with geothermal energy renewable energies yes the other thing which is completely uh, opening up today if you study geology is to go into planetary sciences and that's research oriented but if you want to work with nasa uh i was recent just 19th of may not few 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 week uh, last week uh i read this article where uh, there is a program where now where uh, they have written where um, the nature has published this article that you can actually uh, so one of the first persons to probably step on mars is going to be a female geologist there is a good possibility of that so you know the world is is a very open place for a geologist you have that curiosity you have that passion you want to do something different this is your choice this could be your choice for of career uh shraddha one more uh, question sorry rishi but i've got a lot of questions i believe i'm, I'm absolutely uh, fine shraddha, i'm so happy okay uh how lucrative is uh, geology in india versus uh, other countries uh, or foreign countries if i may ask what do you see the scope of geology in india versus geology in international uh, developed countries um so uh, academically speaking it is better i think in the countries abroad however as you can see i am uh, myself an example and i know plenty of indians who have degrees from iits my husband is actually a petrophysicist he has a he is from iit kharagpur as well and we uh, we have successfully landed our careers you know in in the industry and we have uh, lucrative as lucrative um, um salaries or you know financial benefits as somebody else uh who is who has an who is not who is an engineer or a business analyst oh uh, uh so the probably what gunjan wanted to ask was that is it like this that a person who's uh, educated in your field has better career prospects out of india than in india am i right gunjan uh so yeah rishi so currently okay so i'll try to explain it so for india i will say if you want to have a um, um career in uh, in india after uh, in with uh, a geoscience degree so there are companies like ongc and oil and uh, ntpc uh, gale so these are mostly government org organizations where um, you have a much more stable job but uh, the salary packages might be slightly lower um, than the the abroad industrial market okay but then you gain the um, 
you gain in terms of the as it being very 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 stable but then uh, okay uh, coming back to your point where you said that you read an article on uh, as recent as 19th of may when nasa is uh, sending out a geologist and that could be a female geologist going or uh, representing nasa uh, looking at the kind of research or the kind of uh, uh, breakthrough that indian scientists have been doing of recently don't you think that uh, it has a lot of uh, prospects in indian market as well not only in oil and gas but other fields that are related related to geology like you gave us a few 15 yeah, odd I, mean, i mean india is a india is a big and especially big with our area. prime minister saying uh, to make the local things vocal so, correct so there is a huge potential i think and this is my opinion and also i was discussing uh, with one of my friends who is also a geologist and he's recommend he is into academics and he told me that a lot of indian uh, startups uh, related to clean energy uh, clean energy startups are going to uh, have a future in india because of the initiative from the government as a result of which so if you have like uh, entrepreneur um, related like it's in dreams so you can um, you can pursue that by with a degree of uh, of geoscience and um, yeah i mean that could be one source of you know um, and india also has a lot of potential in the sense we actually do not have enough conventional oil resources uh, india uh, the most famous of oil reserves in india is the uh, cambay basin offshore bombay however there is a huge pockets of something called gas hydrates and this is a unconventional uh, resource of energy which man is still understanding so i was actually i did my internship in national geophysical research institute in hyderabad where i was studying seismic data for uh, discovering gas hydrates so there is a lot of research uh, work i think for as as potential for research work in india to understand climate to understand unconventional resources which are uh, there offshore of the coast of india uh, himalayas which is a huge tectonic zone uh, understanding seismic hazards uh, is very very crucial um, you know so india being tectonically very active uh, gives the opportunity that you know having a domain knowledge of geoscience can help you so uh, this nasa scientist i quoted about this female geoscientist she actually spent her phd uh, studying landslides on mars hence today she has this opportunity that now when the space flight will happen for humans one uh, in the in the near future i think they are they are mentioning in uh, I, i if i'm not wrong 20 in few years of time uh, that they are going to place her you know so there's you there's immense opportunities isro could be one organization where you could be hired as well as a geoscientist great so coming back to one of the basic question that i'm sure all the students would have uh, today is uh, what are the various uh, colleges or the various if i yeah. may put it this way the, the certifications that are available in the market to reach uh where you are today right so for that again i'll go back into screen sharing mode um i have prepared some slides um so can you see my screen again yes yes okay so Is. yeah okay so some of the premier indian institutes having earth science departments which have been ranked in the world uh, within 1000 ranking are iisc bangalore iit bombay icer pune iit kharagpur which is my i am an alumni of iit kharagpur iit roorkee bhu delhi university ju and punjab university 
other than that some of the best geology departments in the world is caltech eth zurich berkeley howard mit princeton university of oxford imperial college of london in london and uh, colorado school of mines in us shraddha i have one question rishi if you may uh, let me Mom, ask please you don't have to ask me every time thank you uh rishi uh, sorry shraddha how yeah. convenient yeah. or how uh, good is geology as a profession for women especially knowing that you have to go off shows i mean i'm talking about the more lucrative uh, aspects of the geology which we've heard from you how uh, good it is as a professional option for women so very good question asked so um this i so i before even i answer the i i start with the reality of today actually Uh, the reality of today is that it's very convenient for a woman to work in the oil and gas industry today but this was, so i ha- i i think i have to thank and we all have to thank that i mean uh, the listeners the kids here that they uh, we are born in a time when we enjoy this right because this wasn't the same the industry has really evolved uh, 30 40 years back the industry was very very male dominated it was not um it was it was a big taboo and i think that taboo still remains to a certain extent but this is where my role comes that i can uh, endorse that that is not the case uh, a lot of um, actually in most in the oil and gas industries a huge amount of uh, time and money goes into investing in taking correct health safe health and safety measurements to ensure activities are as safe as possible because uh, it is a, a you are going to work offshore or you know in remote places as a result major uh, safety measures are taken to ensure uh, it's safe for girls for in fact it's not not only for girls for for both you know for girls as well as uh, as as uh, man you know so uh, i think that's a, that's a myth now that you know girls cannot work in the ind- in the oil and gas industry i i have so many friends it's much more gender balanced now and uh, i think women are doing great in geoscience today thanks sir yeah so and uh, uh, gunjan i would want to on a lighter note Uh, although we do respect to all the teachers who are logged in, please, uh, I, I apologize in advance if I'm uh, going a little further. But then, after watching Bharat, uh, we can easily say that she's our Madam Sir of Bal Bharati Bhattampura, who's gone into the this thing, and uh, or probably we can say that she's our uh, Katrina Kaif of Bal Bharati, who's made a career. in uh, geo sciences and if not at the oil rigs she is doing something related with it is that true shadda yeah yeah totally i am definitely <laughs> i i'm definitely trying to make a mark i have um, had opportunity you certainly have you certainly have so i have uh, travel a lot uh, i have had opportunities to travel to france to netherlands uh, for for my work but may definitely my base is in middle east so i have traveled in more middle eastern com- countries like oman i regularly visit oman um uh, kuwait um and i uh, saudi arabia so that's you know ad- that, that these are the perks of the uh, yeah. of the profession that you are into that you get get to travel a lot oh, uh, yes. although yes the conditions may or may not be favorable favorable every time because you need to work with stones and rocks and god knows what all but then as long as it uh, it entices you or it, it keeps yeah. you keeps your fire kindled within deep within you i'm sure you yeah. will be growing it so, so when you're, you're you're probably as i said earlier if if your love becomes your profession yes you love it Yeah, 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 totally. Like uh, I, when I see rocks, I start to see oh, where there's some layers because you know you when you see rocks, actually you will see you if you see a big piece of mountain next time, try to notice that they have layers. You know, 
horizontal layers. So basically, they are stacked up. When you see them stacked up, it basically means that the older rocks got deposited below, or oh, and the fresh and the newer rocks are above it. So it's the best history lesson in in nature. Is the best history lesson you want to? I mean, and and the and, and it's six fifty million years old, sometimes. So, wow. yeah, it's amazing. Like it's hey, I love to go okay. in the field. Uh, looking at the at, I'm I'm sorry I can go it, till eternity discussing about these rocks and these these things because I'm also a little bit interested now with the profession that you are into, but then we have a time constraint. So uh, yeah. I'm sorry. To sum up the entire conversation for everybody logged into this call is that there, there are a lot of avenues that you can get into. It's not only geophysics or it's not only what Shraddha is doing. You can get into oil mining, oil refining. You can get in. You can go to. Uh, you can travel into space. Being a geologist, you can travel to places like. Uh, UAE, Kuwait, to all the oil fields. You can stay in India and help discover alternative resources of energy. If you you can be an entrepreneur, uh, and that I, I hope uh, Tanvir is listening to it, who's actually into non-conventional resources of energy. Uh, and uh, there's so many other things, and I'm sure every every uh, field has also an option of being becoming a scientist or a researcher like we were discussing in our last session and also uh, contributing to it by entering into the education field because and this goes to our teachers uh, without whom we will not have been result of what we are today and unless there are teachers you can always get into the education uh, part of it as well so uh, to sum it up all this there are a lot of avenues it is just that you need to look at Look at it with a different perspective. You need to walk a different path so that you can carve a path for out uh, for yourself and lead the way and show the light to people who are trying to follow your path. Right. So I'll open up the session for any questions that uh, anybody might have for Shraddha. And if, if you, you wish to type it, if you want to type it in the chat box, we'll be more than glad to take it up. Or if you would want to interact with her directly, that is also absolutely fine with us. So, yeah, you can always you read, if you if you feel shy to ask a question anytime. You can always connect with me um, through my Gmail or uh, anywhere else. Like I can give my contact details to Tanvir, and then that's how you can reach to me. Thanks, Desha. I can see Raman sir has joined the call. He's been there from the starting. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yes. Hi, Raman sir. I was enjoying my session. God bless you, beta. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your blessings are always there. All your te all the teachers blessings are there that we are successful. I thoroughly enjoyed your session. The kind of information you are sharing, it was really wonderful. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate. Really, it's a nice effort. Thank you. Raman sir, as I said, that we would not have been even as dense of what we are today. I did not mean the presence of teachers like you and everybody else. We are what we are, we owe it all to you, the teachers of Balbati. Absolutely. Yeah, I I was telling Bina ma'am that I cannot there's not one day that I don't think about about Balbati. Like my best friends are from Balbati. Like everything which constitutes my basic ethics and everything comes from Balbati. One thing which, um, since like, one thing which I wanted to kind of pass as a message is that one 
one thing i mean of course you have to think about your career but you always listen to your body and mind you have to be very conscious about uh, taking care of your own health with you know uh, when you are planning anything because at the end of the day it's your your body is your own resource so you have to uh, not take uh, not make friends with anxiety and stress and be you know uh, happy and healthy and find joy in what you are doing it's very important but i do agree to that uh, the anything that we would have to ask please go ahead okay disha is asking could you tell me about your job yeah what is it the... about uh, what do you absolutely need for your work right now and how does a normal working day in your week looks like oh that's a good question disha so uh, yeah uh, my job is basically uh, i am a seismic interpreter so you see that seismic um, i showed you a video on seismic so basically uh, a seismic data is kind of um, an image of the earth you know so you when you stand on the ground when you are standing on the ground you don't see the earth right it you you, you don't know about it but below your uh, below where you stand it it has a lot of layers it has a lot of natural resources trapped into it so i typically i go i open my workstation usually like anybody else uh, who works on their computer i would go start my workstation start my software i will import a certain seismic data so the way the seismic data gets imported is different than your it's 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 like each data set have their own format so you load the data then you start applying uh, processes which you want to achieve so for example you want to characterize the seismic data into something meaningful so for example um, i i'll take an analogy here that you know um, you are a human but when you go out in the world you can be a data about an indian student similarly when i am dealing with seismic data the seismic data is one source of data but it can it holds a lot of other information which is important for me to physically characterize a certain uh, rock whether it contains oil or not so i start to look for seismic signatures is the uh, is the seismic amplitudes what we call seismic amplitudes they are getting brighter or are they getting dim if they are getting bright why is it because it's there is oil inside it or not um we do a lot of uh, it's a it's a very intensive technical uh, job it's a super technical job and uh, a lot of uh, algorithms go into to make this uh, interpretation successful um so typically if you Im imagine that you know uh, if you think about sponge you know a sponge can hold a lot of water why does it hold a lot of water because it has pores similarly in the ground you have the rock which has a lot of pores so i am looking for seismic signatures which has a lot of pores so i'm going to find a way to establish physical principle based on physical principles i will find relationships between uh, the seismic and something called porosity which is a factor of the pore space in the rock and if the seismic is indicative that the pore space is higher i am going to suggest to my client that you know you should try to drill your next well and this wells are like multi million thousands of multi million dollars you know so next time you give so if our, my interpretation is correct then it can sa save the oil and gas industry millions of money because um you know a seismic data is probably cost 10 million 10 million you know and a well which gets drilled to actually go and extract the oil takes 100 million dollar so if a 10 million dollar data can help you to figure out that your next 100 million dollar well is going to be in the right place you better invest in that 10 million dollar data wow that's so interesting which i hope uh, 
was able to answer your question. Uh, next, uh, Shraddha Hrida is asking us, um, did you have it in mind from the beginning that you wanted to enter the geology field? Like, were your dreams and aspirations related to this field only? To give it a start, uh, Hrida, let me tell you that she was always interested in music and creative arts. And Shraddha, you can take it up further from here. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, my, my basic Balbharti life has, was spent in the basement, <laughs> in the music room or in the art, art room. But I was always a very curious student. I always wanted to know more. If I didn't understand, I will leave it for some time and then I'll come back to that topic. So geology did not, was not told by me until my sister told me about it. But, um, but uh, same pins back uh, so um, but yeah i mean uh, i was always like i'm madly curious about anything you give me some so volcano volcanoes or earthquakes interested me a lot i remember back in i think um, i don't remember the year but there was a the, the bhuj earthquake which happened on the day of uh, the republic day 26 january was one of the and days. It was 2000 was, or 2001. Yeah, I mean, I I was like mad about this Earth phenomena. That what exactly is happening, you know? So th the interest kind of carried forward, and then the 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 you know the the Newton moment happened when my sister told me that you know geoscience is actually an opportunity which you which can be pursued. So the mix of my my curiosity plus. Um, Plus uh, the fact that I I I'm, I have to admit one thing that you know um, when I set my mind I uh, I would achieve it when I set that mind is another question so my mind was set later but when I did I made sure that I become the best in that field that's so, a learning for everybody I think that. Once you decide, it's, you may take whatever time you want to decide what, where do you want to go, what do you want to pursue. But once you decide, give it your best shot and right. ensure that you excel in that. So, yeah, yeah. Today, I think uh, Shraddha has answered your question. We'll move on yeah. to the next from Yogita. Hi, ma'am. Did you have any gaps for the preparation? No, absolutely none. My. <laughs> I was surprised. I thought that I'll need a gap year. <laughs> I'll need a gap year. I was, uh, but DU's, Delhi University's geology course is so intensive to make you succeed in IIT jam exam. So the entrance exam, which I gave was not, is not called JEE. It's called jam. So that stands for joint admission for master's program in IIT. And I, um, it, it just three years of intensive education in geoscience is what made me, you know, succeed in that exam. I had to prepare. So in that exam, you have to give uh, exam for geology and you have to also select one more, one more subject. So I took a combination of uh, geology and maths. Great. Yeah. The next Sorry. question comes from Sanvi, which says, Ma'am, what all did you study to reach at the level you are at right now? Mostly, uh, most so when you study geology in um, in so here is a suggestion. Um, uh, I my personal interest in chemistry was a bit low, and I always think to read geophysics you need a background in physics and maths. So combine combination of geology and uh, physics or a combination of geology and maths is co going to lead you to uh, where I am today. So uh, when I was studying, but I have friends who did geology and chemistry and who are geologists now. So they could not become geophysicists, but they are geologists. So these are the combination of subjects which you can target. Um, um, the other thing is that um, what are the studies? So I wanted to kind of brief you a little bit about uh, what kind of subjects you actually study in geology. So 
in geol what what you study in geology as a starting uh, when you start with bachelors you will start studying planetary earth sciences what are the main how is the what is the composition of earth uh, you will go into three classifications of rocks which is sedimentary rocks igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks you will try to understand the chemical reactions that happen that lead to uh, the the composition of these rocks and when you uh, do a course in geophysics you will be studying fourier analysis um, and uh, integration calculus driven uh, methods of uh, finding uh, you know geophysical to to you will go through a course of geophysical prospecting of oil and gas reservoirs which requires a lot of uh, theoretical knowledge of fourier analysis and uh, integration calculus I think that answered your question. Any other questions that we may have before we let Shraddha enjoy her Saturday evening? Great. I think that should be all. Uh, Tanvir, if you're there, anything that you would want to add before we end the session today? Uh, I think Tanvir has dropped out of the call because of network issues. But I really feel uh, awesome uh, hearing to you, uh, Shraddha. It feels great that women are embarking on to which were considered uh, primarily male-dominated fields and making a good mark there. And from unconventional uh, interest in unconventional to something so uh, research or science driven, I think it's uh, great and kudos to you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Issue over to you. Oh, thank you. So, Tada, on behalf of the entire Balbarti fraternity uh, and the Alumni Association, I would want to thank you once again, taking out time from your busy schedule and uh, helping us enlighten our uh, knowledge about one more field. And uh, as Vede says, thank you so much for a lovely session. And all the thanks are pouring in one by one after the other. I would also want to take this opportunity to thank all the teachers without whose help this session would not have been possible, especially Bina Ma'am, who helps us every week, week on week, like she's been doing it when we were students. And thank you so much all for taking out time. No, no. Yeah. I thank everybody as well. Thank you, uh, Shraddha. Thank you, thank Rishi. You. And thank you, Gunjan and Tanvir. Obviously, all of you, it's so nice to see you all coming back and talking to our students, which makes us feel that, yes, what we taught you, it's coming back to us. So I'm really happy to see you all prospering in your life and having a good career and a had help. help ha Happy life and all. So thank you so much, all of you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Have a great evening ahead and a great weekend. And wishing everybody who's logged in a happy year in advance. Thank you, Thanks. Rishi. Thanks, Sada. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.